You can't touch the table, though, because you can bounce the camera around. Hey, everybody, I'm Bill. Are we recording right now? <laughs> you almost record a little extra so you have stuff. Okay, ready? <laughs> Take two. Hey, everybody, I'm Bill. Hi, I'm Denise. Hi. This is Owen. <laughs> yeah, we're still working on the wave. <laughs> we'll get it one of these days. We got Charlie down here. <laughs> he he wants to be in this too, but we're up a little high. Don't so anyway, <laughs> uh, it's been a little while. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, 2021 is here. Off to the races. <laughs> I think, um, you know, obviously we're still in the middle of a global pandemic, so there's that. I think for, for us, uh, thankfully... Owen's grandparents have either gotten their vaccines or are scheduled to get their vaccines. So that's kind of cool. Um, we will be way down the list, which is fine with us. <laughs> there are many other people who need it way before us. Yeah. But what that means for us is 2020 on repeat. So we are fully prepared to distance and isolate and... Stay away from people again this year, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, until he can actually get vaccinated, which is probably a year or two yeah. out. So, yeah. So, um, this winter, we've been just kind of hanging out. Um, we've done a couple of hikes locally. Um, Owen has definitely been getting out. Yes. Uh, although, once <laughs> it gets below about 20 degrees... It's a little too chilly for him, and right now, it's 12, so... Yeah, it was negative one this morning. Yeah, so... We... <laughs> it was really cold. <laughs> this week is supposed to be really cold. Um, I think winter has finally arrived. The cold part of winter has arrived here in northern Michigan, so... Mm -hmm. We um, probably won't be getting out doing too many hikes in the next month or so, but... No, Maybe. it really all depends on the weather. But in this video, we are going to show you some of the different places we visited when we were over by Harrisville, when we stayed at the mini cabin, which if you haven't seen that video, it's the video right before this, so check it out. Um, while we were there, we did some day trips. We went to go visit the historic Harrisville Hi. train depot, and then the then... historic Bailey Schoolhouse, and also Sturgeon Point Lighthouse. So we did that uh, all in a day from the state park. Mm -hmm. They're all It was all pretty close to each other. Yeah, it wasn't like a really long drive or anything. No, and actually we also went up to the other state park on the same day too, didn't we? Uh, Nagwagon. I Nagwagon. believe we did. I think we did. So, yeah. um, of course, it was snowy and cold. So um, it wasn't like we were hanging out on the beach or anything. We did stop at the beach at both locations. So I may have looked for rocks. And found some Petoskeys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to pop some of that into this video here, and we will just kind of be chatting about these locations. Um, historic Harrisville Train Depot was a pretty cool place. We actually stumbled upon that earlier yeah, in, back in the summer. Father's Day. Yeah, um, It was a really cool building, and when we got there, it was weird because it seemed like we had just timed it right to have, um, we heard a train in the distance coming. Yeah, in, so. so the, the depot was actually owned by Lake State Railway, and while we were there, one of their trains happened to be coming by, so. If you don't want to see a train video, or if you're not that into trains, just skip ahead like a minute and 30 seconds. Watch the video. <laughs>
So the depot uh, was actually built in 1901, um, originally for the Detroit and Mackinac Railway Company. Um, trains, uh, train everything was super critical and important to uh, Michigan's logging industry. So that's mm -hmm. the Whoa! primary reason for the railway up into the wilds of northern Michigan. So um, trains arrived Whoa! daily. This was actually... Uh, one of the bigger stops and uh, quite a popular area um, in northern Michigan. And if you look up old photos, which maybe we'll throw one on here, um, there's actually like no trees anywhere around the depot, which because they logged them all. makes sense. They cut everything down. <laughs> so it's kind of weird when you go up there now. It sits um, in the middle, basically, of a cedar, upland cedar swamp. So it's super dense trees around it. Um, and you look at the photos and there was absolutely nothing, which is kind of crazy and stark mm -hmm. reminder of <laughs> the logging industry and the impacts that it had on Northern Michigan. So, yeah. And a lot of the, um, the people that use the train, if they can't, if they rode the train up from Detroit, it would only take two hours. Uh. But at that time period automobiles were first coming out if they wanted to take a car up to Harrisville from Detroit I read that it would it could take up to two days two day drive or you could take a train for two hours and this is before obviously before the interstate system and mm -hmm. before highways um so I totally believe that it would take a two day drive yeah. to get up there but um with that said you know the obvious thing happened you know once automobiles got better and the road system was being built um the trains were getting used less and less. So the last passenger train to leave this depot um, was in March 31st, 1951. But the depot was still used for mail and freight service until the early 1960s. Yep, and the there's um, we learned also through finding some really weird rocks <laughs> on the lakeshore um, that, that uh, there were some auto manufacturing plants up in the area. And so we were actually finding grinding stones. And so the railway was, of course, used to move uh, materials and supplies for the auto, auto industry in and out of Harrisville as well. Yeah, so it played an integral part of the community. Um, and the depot is along the Harrisville Heritage tra uh, Route Trail, um, which is an old, I believe it's an old rails to trails um, trail system. Uh, Rails to Trails is along an old line that's no longer active, and that actually goes through Harrisville State Park and into town. So after the awesome train passage at the train depot, which was super cool, it was just, it, 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 as soon as we heard the horn from down in town, I was like, grab the cameras, and we, we were scurried to get it. Uh, yeah, it was just a really some... cool thing to see. Um and what was funny, I don't think you could see it in the video very well, but um, when the the train came by, the conductor, uh, we were dorks and we're waving at him. And he waved back and we were all excited. Is that dorky? <laughs> Wave at the train. I don't know. Like, that's not dorky. We were so excited. <laughs> so after the uh, train depot, we headed towards the Sturgeon Point Lighthouse, which is actually on uh, property that yeah. is now co-managed between the Department of Natural Resources and the Alcona Historical Society. Um, off of the parking lot uh, over by the Sturgeon Point Lighthouse, there is the historic Bailey Schoolhouse, oh. which is one of the few remaining ah. standing one room log schoolhouses. The schoolhouse was actually built in 1907 and it was built out of, it says Norway pine, but that is also known as red pine, um, which is more how we commonly say that here in Michigan is red pine. Um, it was originally built at the C.A. Johnson logging camp, which was just west of Mikado, Mikado. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It was built for a little logging. <laughs> We're tourists. Right. It was <laughs> built, it was built it for right. a little logging um, community nearby, so it would um, help teach the children of the logging crews in the area. And the school was actually named after a lumberman who helped build the school, and later on, in 1913, he also supervised moving the school to a different location, which was elsewhere in the community. I couldn't really find specifically where it was located to in 1913, 
After that, they had partially restored it, and this was in the 19, 1973. Um, and they partially restored it, and then it didn't get moved into the Sturgeon Point Lighthouse area until 1998. So that schoolhouse, one of the few remaining log one-room schoolhouses in Michigan, was moved at least twice. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, uh, log buildings are, are fairly easy to move, not like a brick building. So. Yeah, so, so they completely disassembled it, moved it, and then... Probably re disassembled and moved it. Re yeah. Restored it. Um, at its current location at the Sturgeon Point Lighthouse area. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little uh, little old school house to see. They have um, some of the old desks and that kind of thing inside of it as well. So, yeah. so it is very interesting because you do along that uh, coastline by Harrisville all the way up to this um, Sturgeon Point Lighthouse. You do notice these maritime um, heritage trail signage in different points of interest going along there. And they do go into great detail about the specific shipwreck, so what would happen, the dates. Um, it, all, it is all very interesting. So the Sturgeon Point Lighthouse was actually finished in November of 1870. Uh, it's a brick structure. Um, the tower is 70 foot, 9 inches tall. Um, and uh, the light is actually still maintained by the U.S. Coast Guard. So the... Keeper's House um, and Grounds are now a museum, mm -hmm. um, which is open Memorial Day through mid-September um, for tours uh, with COVID-ness, you know, whatever. Check into that if you're going to go up there. Uh, <laughs> make sure it's open for you. They do have a Facebook page mm -hmm. um, and a website as well. So I'm sure they will post all their information. Uh, basically, in 2020, it was closed. Yeah. Um, but the grounds were still available to walk around, and they do have a number of uh, vessels. Yeah, even if the museum is still closed this coming year, I would highly suggest still going. Yeah, they had a number of, of uh, items outside. Yeah, there's um, a ton of historical artifacts that they have set up outside with interpretive educational signage. Um, so there's still a lot to do there, even if you can't go into the building. There's still a lot to do on the grounds, I would say. And there was a really nice beach there, too. I mean, mm -hmm. rocky, sandy beach. Yeah, I found a lot of Petoskeys there, and we weren't there that long um, <laughs> at all. I, I think, and I think I found three Petoskeys wow. in a few minutes. But um, obviously, we were there during off-season. It was late December. There was only one other person that was there walking around when we were there. Photographer. And, yeah, and he went out and took a snapped a few photos off the beach, and then he left. So we had the entire place to ourselves, it seemed mm -hmm. like. So... It's good if you're uh, a birder, or you like lighthouses, or you like rocks, or you like rocks, um, or you just like being outside. Maritime history. There's a lot to do over in this little area, mm -hmm. um, so definitely check it out. So yeah, and if you've been to the, these areas and we missed something really cool, and tell us about it in the comments. Um, All right. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>